Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kathy and you're watching Kathy's Country Life. Just got home from work. It's a Tuesday and I wanted to go ahead and get my um, dinner tonight whipped up. I'm going to make enough where I can make a freezer meal out of half of this to put in the freezer. And what I'm making today is a chicken and wild rice casserole. I love casseroles. I don't know if it's a southern thing or what, but love me a good chicken casserole. So, I'm just going to show y'all. I really wasn't going to get on here and film, but I just thought I'd get on here and show y'all what I do to make this um, chicken casserole. It's so yummy. And we'll have enough for tonight and put it in the freezer for another weeknight meal coming up soon. In here is three chicken breasts that I just cubed up. I washed, rinsed off, and cubed up. I'm gonna add some salt, and some pepper, and some garlic. Mix this all around. Get every piece with some seasoning on it. Convection little cooktop here right on my island with a cast iron skillet on it. I'm just going to give these a quick browning. You could just boil your chicken and you know tear it apart, but I'm going to keep it and give it some browning. brown these up and then I'll be right back with ya. Okay, I did switch the chicken over to the stove and I'm going to add one chopped onion to three tablespoons of butter and get those softened down. Alright, I'm going to let these cook. I'm going to let the chicken finish browning up. And I'll be back with the next step. And I just wanted to show you guys that this is the wild rice that I use. I don't use this a thing of this wild rice. I use the rice long grain and wild rice. It's got that seasoning kind of mixed in it. And it just makes it even more delicious. So, rice Wild rice mix. Yummy. Okay. So I got my rice roni wild um, rice mix. And I'm kind of following directions on the box, but I'm kind of not. Because I sauteed these onions in three tablespoons of butter. But it calls for one tablespoon of butter on the package. And then I'm going to add in... The seasoning mix and the rice. I'm going to stir that up. Then I'm going to um, I'm going to get it up to a bowl. We're going to turn it down. I'm going to put some kind of top on it. I don't know that I got a top to this skillet. Um, I'll find something. 
and kind of just let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes until the rice gets done. I've just got the, um, the, uh, the, the eye on my stove turned off for that chicken on that cast iron. And it's still sizzling away. Um, some of the pieces weren't quite done, some bigger chunks. So I'm just letting the residual heat just go ahead and just cook those up. And we're going to let this cook away. I am going to add to this, which I think is rice, oops, this rice roni mix. Yes, it's full of stuff. Um, it doesn't say for sure, but I'm going to add some thyme, some dry thyme. Probably about half a teaspoon and then some dried basil leaves. Same thing, half a teaspoon. Okay, I'm going to turn this down. I'm stopping on seasoning anything with salt at this point because I salted the turkey, I mean the turkey, turkey, the chicken, and I salted the onions, and then plus this thing, it's got sodium in it. So, no more salting of the stuff. We'll do a taste test when it's done to see if I need anything else, but that's all the salting I'm doing. Back. Okay, so I took the chicken off. There it is, and I put a can of cream of mushroom soup. Also, I like to do this, but I didn't have any mushrooms. If you have any fresh mushrooms, I do like to slice those up and put them in with the onions when I'm sauteing those. But I don't have any fresh mushrooms right now. So I'm gonna add a third a cup of sour cream to this. This is a fourth of a cup, so I'm just making it heaping. fourth of a cup of chicken broth I didn't have I didn't want to open up one of my jars of chicken stock for two for a fourth of a cup so I just put some water in some of that better than bouillon chicken um, and boiled it to make me some chicken stock broth whatever you want to call it I'm gonna give this a good stir get it all incorporated Gotta shred up some cheese. By the time I do that, I think that our rice will be done and we can mix this all together. It's gonna be good, y'all. Okay, so what I just did, I shredded up some cheese. I just took a small handful and put in here. It's hot. I'm gonna put the rice mixture in. Smells delicious. You can add, I've added before, some, um, some broccoli. You can add, oh, you know what? I may do that. Hang on. I'm going to add some green peas. Just to give it some green. Hang on. I'm just going to throw some frozen peas in just to give it some color. 
but this is just a basic recipe you can do what you want to add what you want to I had some dried kale too that I thought about putting in it with the liquid so it can be softening up but I didn't and I don't know that there's enough liquid in here for it to soften up I'm gonna add just a bit more of this chicken broth and now my plan was we was going to eat half of it tonight and then I was going to freeze the other half and now, and I don't know if it's just because I'm so hungry, I'm thinking about just cooking the whole thing and then having some for lunch. We can both take some for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> I think I might do that. I've got a freezer meal um, day coming up, probably this weekend, where I've got a bunch of freezer meals I'm going to be doing. So I may just wait. I may do this again as a freezer meal. Yeah. What I'll do. Okay, let me go get my, my pan. Okay, I got a 9 by 13 Pyrex. I sprayed it with some avocado spray. And I'm going to just put this all in here. That way I'll have something for lunch tomorrow. Um, I will cook this in a 375 oven until it gets hot, bubbly, and the cheese gets melted on top. I'm going to taste this. Mmm. Almost a little bit too much salt. Definitely doesn't need any more. And this cheese is kind of got salt in it too. It's borderline, but it, it's good. This is just white cheddar cheese that I shredded up. So I'll just put it all. Okay. Then we'll sprinkle a little bit of thyme on top. And a little bit of basil. Okay. This will go into an oven, like I said, 375 till it's hot, bubbly, the cheese is melted. And I'll bring you back when I take it out of the oven and see what it looks like. Y'all are getting a bonus, bonus, bonus recipe. As I was starting to clean up and get everything off the counter, I was like, oh, I want something sweet. Yeah. I want something sweet. I always want something sweet. What's new? So I thought I'd whip up a chocolate pie. I make these a lot. They're very easy. I mean, I don't make them a lot, lot. Um, but they're very easy to make and I thought I'd show you it. So, I'm doing a pie crust that I've done several times. Um, it's not the one that I normally make. This is one that you make it in your pie pan. And it really is good. I mean, it, it really is good and it's flaky. And I probably will never go back to um, regular pie crust. Making them and rolling them out and all that jazz. Um, this is kind of like my go-to now. So, get my ingredients ready. And I will bring you down here and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the crust first and then we'll do the filling for the pie. Okay, in the pie crust I'm going to do a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Then 
then I'm going to do about a teaspoon and a half of sugar. I'm just eyeballing. And then a teaspoon of salt. Let me get my half a cup measure. My fourth a cup, and then you're going to use a half a cup of oil. You can use vegetable oil, um, just a neutral oil. I am make sure I'm using avocado oil. This is that's a fourth. Oh my goodness! So that's a half, and then you're going to need. Oh, look, I'm almost out of milk. About two teaspoons, two tablespoons of milk, which would be about half of a fourth of a cup. And then you just get to mixing. You can get in there with your hands if you want to, but you're just going to get it all mixed up and get that flour wet with your oil and milk. I meant to, I got this off a of recipe off of the website. Um, I think it's called Southern Plate. Don't quote me. But I saw that Brenda Gant did one that looked like this, and I meant to go on and look at her recipe and see if it's different from this and what she does. gonna sprinkle a little bit more flour, not much. Okay, then you're gonna get in there with your hands. And this is an oily dough, so it really don't stick to you. And I'm just gonna get all that flour incorporated. Then you're just going to start spreading it. You can use the bottom. I don't really normally have the best of luck using the bottom of a measuring cup. But I see a lot of people do. You just want to bring it up the sides. This is very forgiving. If you get a hole, it's very easy just to mash it shut because it's a wet dough, oily dough. holes in it but it's very easy just to go and pat it down now look is this not so much easier than the other kind of pie crust yet but I know that you can sit here and work with it and make a pretty edge but y'all I'm really simple when it comes to just mine and my husband's meals I mean I will even take 
several slices over to my in-laws house and once you slice it you know it's the presentation of it coming out of the oven with a pretty fluted edge but once you slice it it's fine I just kind of make sure that it kind of it's over and it's flattened out against the lip because the pie as it cooks does kind of shrink down so if you just leave your edge to like right you know, right in here, then you really can't see it. And you would treat this just like any other pie crust. <clears throat> you know, if you're doing a refrigerate and chill type pie, a no-bake pie, you can just put this in the oven and pre-bake it. And it works out fine. I see. Mm, so easy. I mean, the only time you have in it is getting it in here. Okay, so pie crust is ready. Let me get this stuff ready for the filling. Okay, and here I've got a stick of melted butter. Then I'm going to add two pretty heaping tablespoons of flour. granulated sugar and then my tablespoon got big on it then we're going to use four tablespoons of cocoa powder I did a little bit of a heaping. Oh, look at me. Well, I wasted some of that. Let me get a little bit more. Boy, have I got a messy kitchen to clean up tonight. Okay, I need a cup of milk. Thinking about my milk situation. I'm thinking about my milk situation. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. Have you ever? Right on the money. I've gotten out my half and half just in case I need to add some of that. Okay. Stir, stir slowly. Oh, let me put some vanilla. You know, just do it till your heart says stop. liquidy and that's why you um, add the flour to it to help thicken it up on um, 350 degrees about 30 minutes <clears throat> you don't want it to feel real solid when you take it out you want a little 
movement to it. Kind of like when you cook a cheesecake. Okay, let me get the pie crust. Ooh, what a mess. And you're just going to pour this in. I'm going to put it in the oven. My oven is preheated and um, when my casserole and this gets all done I'll, and this is all cleaned up, we will, um, I know we do it, I will um, show y'all what we got. Oh gosh, those are going to be full tonight of how I like it. Okay, the chicken and wild rice casserole is done. See it steaming. I ended up because I put the pie in first on 350 degrees. So I went ahead and just put the casserole in with it being 350 degrees. And it cooked for about 20 minutes until it got hot and all the cheese melted. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> That is so good, delicious. I'm gonna sit down and eat this. And then the pie is still a little bit jiggly. So when it gets done, I'll come back to you. Okay, the pie is ready. Just took it out of the oven, it's still popping hot. It's, um, let me bring you down and show you. Ooh. It's real firm. Oh, it already broke off. Um, it's firm around here and just a little bit jiggly in the middle. So as this cools, it will set. So probably about 30, 45 minutes, I'll be enjoying a piece of that. And my crust is crumbling right there. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining me again. I appreciate it so much. Um, please hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I will see you next time. Bye.